Yo. Oh. Yo. Oh. Aubrey Edwards, Tony Shivani. We bout to party. We bout to party. Unrestricted. Got the house now. We gon' turn it up. Welcome to AEW Unrestricted, the official podcast of All Elite Wrestling. I'm Will Washington. This is a little bit different of an edition of AEW Unrestricted because this is the first time that AEW Unrestricted is not hosted by Aubrey Edwards. But that's okay because I'm still here with the one and only the CEO, the general manager of All Elite Wrestling. It is Tony Khan. Hey, Will. It's great to be here with you, keeping the great pay-per-view tradition alive ahead of the AEW Wrestle Dream pay-per-view this Sunday. It's going to be a great event live in Seattle. There's still great tickets available, and the show will be on pay-per-view Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. It's going to be a great event this Sunday, October 1st. It's an event to honor the legacy of the late, great Antonio Inoki, who passed away one year ago, exactly. Uh, he's one of the greatest wrestling promoters of all time, and we've put together one of the greatest cards in the history of AEW. I circled this date a year ago and have really tried to put together one of our best cards to honor one of the greatest legends ever in wrestling. And this event is very special. I think this will be, in many ways, the end of an era in AEW and the beginning of a new era in AEW. And I'm very excited about what's going to happen going forward after Wrestle Dream. And I think Wrestle Dream this Sunday is just going to be an amazing event from top to bottom. And when we're talking about Wrestle Dream, I think it's great to talk about a match that we announced at the top, a match that is a true dream match in the sport, something we've been looking forward to for a very long time. And that is the great state of Washington's own Brian Danielson, the American Dragon, the hometown oh, hero in this case, God. in a dream match, taking on the New Japan Pro Wrestling World Television Champion, Zack Sabre Jr. This is a dream match, two of the greatest technical wrestlers of all time, one-on-one -on -one in a match that we really thought we were going to get to see really over a year ago, last summer, at Forbidden Door, and I'm so excited that we get this match this Sunday at Wrestle Dream. I am so excited for this match. There, the, the moment this was announced, I I felt like Wrestle Dream was going to live up to its name because this is that type of match that that fans have been clamoring for. Uh, we've seen these two go at it in the past, but it's been a really, really long time. I think you said it's something to the effect of fourteen years. Yeah, I believe it. I believe their first match was fifteen years ago, and the rematch years. would be fourteen years ago. And it's an even series. It's one one, and we're picking it up with a rubber match fourteen years later. And both men have come so far in these fourteen years. Their bodies physically, they've transformed. Both men have put on muscle. Both men have accomplished great things in the sport of pro wrestling. And this match, to me, is one of the most highly anticipated dream matches we could possibly put on an event like Wrestle Dream this Sunday at pay per view. Well, and when I think about the year that both men have been having, you think about the year that Zack Sabre Jr. has had. He is nearly one year as the New Japan Pro Wrestling World Television Champion, and uh, he won it literally last October. So he has had just a tremendous year, um, a tremendous year of defenses, um, both in New Japan Pro Wrestling. He's appeared in AEW as well. And thinking about the year Brian Danielson has had this year, and really coming into this year, uh, Brian Danielson has had uh, a tremendous set of matches. And just recently coming off of matches with Ricky Starks, you know, th there's a piece of me that, that worries, of course, that, you know, he literally just had two incredibly intense matches with Ricky Starks. How is he going to be coming into this match with Zack Sabre Jr.? And at the same time, Zack Sabre Jr. Um, is walking into to Brian Danielson's home state of Washington. And... There's going to be a lot of fans in the building that are there for Brian Danielson and thinking about being in that situation where your back's against the wall, where you're in the, the lion's den with those fans. Both guys have a distinct advantage and both guys have almost a, a disadvantage in this sense. And it makes it a really exciting contest for these two. It's going to be a great, great match. It certainly fits 
what we're looking for at Wrestle Dream, a dream match and a match that I know as a wrestling fan, I've been looking forward to for a very long time. And it's an honor to put this on this Sunday on pay-per-view at Wrestle Dream. I know ever since we announced this match, there's been a lot of buzz. And we certainly expected to see this last year at Forbidden Door. It would have been an awesome match at Forbidden Door. And I think with Brian Danielson being injured in the inaugural Anarchy in the Arena, it's been a long time coming. But I think this Sunday is one of those matches, Sabre versus Danielson, that's worth the wait. Absolutely. Uh, and again, the, the fact that it gets to happen here of all places one year after the passing of Antonio Noki, like everything just fits so perfectly with the theme of this show. I am so excited for this. It's Wrestle Dream. It's available on traditional pay-per-view. It's available on Bleacher Report and the Bleacher Report app. It's also available on Fight TV internationally, and you can still get tickets in Seattle, AEWTIX.com. And we're on what I believe, Will, is our best run of major events in the history of AEW. If you look back at our recent pay-per-views, I think we're on the greatest streak of pay-per-view events in the history of AEW. Forbidden Door was an amazing event. What a great show in Toronto. We just talked about Brian Danielson, Zack Sabre Jr. They both participated in that great show. And we had so many of the top stars in the world of professional wrestling in Toronto at Forbidden Door. I thought it was one of our best shows ever. Then we followed that up with the biggest pro wrestling event of all time, Wembley Stadium, with 81,035 tickets sold. And by the way, uh, I saw uh, some confirmation that uh, really maybe the uh, number we put out now, all of a sudden, people thought that the turnstile number was a number to look at. I think I have told everybody all along that was the ticket sold. And now I've seen a tickets distributed and uh, an attendance number of about 85,000 that was confirmed by the local municipality. That's very much in line with what we had along with our 81,035 tickets sold. And to have the all-time record for ticket sales, and one of AEW's biggest pay-per-view uh, box office numbers of all time. It was one of the most critically successful wrestling events and commercially successful wrestling events, and that is the inaugural AEW All-In at Wembley Stadium. And following up Forbidden Door and All-In, we went to All Out, and everyone wondered, how are you going to follow those shows at all out and we did we followed Absolutely. it with arguably the greatest pay-per-view in AEW history the run of shows we're on right now from forbidden door in toronto all in in london and all out in chicago it's unparalleled in my opinion in our history and i think it's the best run of pay-per-views i've seen and now we're going to seattle for wrestle dream with a loaded card we just talked about a dream match with washington's own brian danielson in a huge match taking on Zack Sabre Jr., the world's two greatest technical wrestlers, going one-on-one -on -one this Sunday at Wrestle Dream. It's what Wrestle Dream's all about. And speaking of great matches, there's a match that's a personal dream match for me, and it's become a really bitter rivalry. And it's two men that I believed would have great wrestling chemistry and I thought could make magic together. And what's come together in recent months has been some of the most compelling wrestling on television. And I think these two have an incredible chemistry. I'm so excited for this Sunday. Speaking of people from the great state of Washington, speaking of hometown heroes, Seattle's own Darby Allen will challenge for the TNT title in a two out of three falls match against the champion Christian Cage. This is such an exciting match for me. I think you know, and, and everybody backstage knows, I personally was so excited for their first one-on-one -on -one match on Collision, and I felt like it delivered beyond belief. It was one of the best matches, in my opinion, we've ever had on AEW television, and I was so excited about that great match one-on-one -on, -one on Collision, and Darby Allen got the win, beat Christian got the victory, but then after the match, Christian uh, attacked him, stood over him, and made Tony Schiavone announce Christian as the winner, even though that was not the case. And we saw Christian carry the championship around as if he was the champion for months. Well, things took a turn last Saturday on Collision. Christian Cage is the TNT champion now, 
and he's going to Darby Allen's hometown, Seattle, and it's a very interesting situation because it's a two out of three falls match. And we've seen Darby Allen has beaten Christian Cage on two occasions now. He has uh, a Grand Slam, and then of course, as you mentioned, on Collision. Yeah, and I think that going into this pay per view, we've seen the chemistry between these two. And as I said, the match on Collision, the one on one match, I thought was off the charts great. And the potential for the two out of three falls match, I just think is unreal. I think these two have so much chemistry, and now the personal hatred between the two of them has reached a new level. We've seen Christian Cage is willing to take the most personal cheap shots in pro wrestling. We've seen Christian Cage. He has no filter. He knows no bounds. He is truly a terrible person. And Christian Cage is really, I think, provoking Darby Allen. We've seen him insult the father of Nick Wayne, the late Buddy Wayne. Mm-hmm. We've seen him insult Darby Allen. We've seen him bring up something that really doesn't get talked about in AEW very often. And that's a formative experience early in Darby Allen's life. And it's not something, you know, we go out of our way to bring up. And it's a car accident that Darby was in when he was five years old. His uncle was driving. Darby's said that it was a drunk driving accident. And his uncle passed away in that car crash. And Christian Cage, uh, being the low-down person he is and trying to provoke Darby ahead of this Sunday's pay-per-view, we heard him on Wednesday night bring up that car accident and try to make light of it and really try to provoke Darby ahead of the match. Yeah. And uh, just thinking about who Christian is and how this has become so much of who Christian is. It's interesting to talk about Christian as the new TNT champion, right? Because he's really been holding on to that championship Throughout the majority of the summer, uh, yeah. pretty much since the first episode of Collision, the championship was held by Luchasaurus, but the, the belt was held by Christian Cage. And, and it, it's almost gratifying, in a sense, as a fan of Christian Cage's to see him as champion. But on the other side of that, you have Darby Allen, who, when you think about the TNT championship and you think about all of the champions that have held this title, Darby Allen is almost synonymous with this title. He is almost stat for stat considered the greatest TNT champion of all time. He's held the title longer than anybody. He's had more title defenses than anybody. And he has the opportunity to become a three-time TNT champion, which would tie the record for most TNT title wins. And these two, of course, have had incredible matches, as you've mentioned before. Um, I almost wanted to, to ask you, because we saw Christian Cage, we saw the announcement, of course, made uh, as Tony Schiavone was interviewing Christian that this match was going to be we're going back to pure wrestling here. This is going to be a two out of three falls match. And it was announced by Tony Schiavone through one Tony Khan. And I wanted to get your thoughts on why two out of three falls. Why did you want to see these two go at it? Two out of three falls. Wrestle dreams about dream matches. And I thought the match they had on television was just amazing. It was the highest level of pro wrestling to me. The two of them have so much chemistry And it would be very hard to top that match as it is. I think both men we've seen in very barbaric circumstances at times, including the coffin match they were in at Wembley Stadium. And I think that is very compelling. But I also think that there's something compelling about great wrestling. And Christian Cage and Darby Allin are two of the best wrestlers in the world. And I think in a two out of three falls match, they're going to be able to showcase that. And I think it's very fitting, given that Darby's pinned Christian twice and now Christian's the champion, for Christian Cage to go out there. I think now it's got to be perfect situation for a dream match at Wrestle Dream because Darby Allen has to win two falls, which we've seen he can do. And Darby has a chance to pull off a storybook conclusion to this amazing rivalry in his hometown. What a moment it can be on Sunday. Darby Allen winning the championship in his hometown, Seattle, becoming the three-time TNT champion, solidifying himself as the greatest TNT champion of all time. On the other hand, Christian Cage has a chance to prove that he is a great champion. He has been carrying the title around, but one thing he's never done is defend the championship. 
and now he is the champion for real. It's a great chance for Christian Cage, but it's also a great opportunity for the wrestling fans. I believe that the story between Darby Allen and Christian Cage, as we've seen everything unfold, this rivalry, it's just fascinating, and it's taken turns. There have been great matches. There have been great moments. I just think it's continued to get more and more intense, and in this kind of a match, a two out of three falls match, I think we're going to find out, hopefully, who the better wrestler is on Sunday. And I have very high expectations, given especially how great the first match was. I just think a two out of three falls match, Darby Allen versus Christian Cage for the TNT title this Sunday at Wrestle Dream, that's a match that I expect will be off the charts. Agreed. And I am very much looking forward to it. And, and speaking of some of the best wrestlers in the world, we have to talk about one of the best tag teams in the world um, because they currently hold the AEW World Tag Team Championships, and that is FTR, who will be defending the AEW World Tag Team titles against Aussie Open, Mark Davis, Kyle Fletcher. Let's go. Uh, you know, we, we talk about uh, traditions, and, and uh, a year ago we saw these two have a match that you mentioned having watched Christian and Darby multiple times. I watched FTR versus Aussie Open yes. multiple times. An incredible match. One of Classic. my favorite matches of last year. And knowing that it's now happening in an AEW ring under much different circumstances. But uh, we are seeing now the AEW World Tag Team titles on the line. Talk to me about this match. Tom. I am so excited to have Aussie Open challenge FTR for the AEW World Tag Team Championship this Sunday at Wrestle Dream. Again, this is the kind of great match that Wrestle Dream is all about. You've got two teams, two teams that have held the IWGP World Heavyweight Tag Team Championship, two tag teams that have held the ROH World Tag Team Championship, and now Aussie Open trying to match FTR, win the AEW World Tag Team Championship. What a match they had last year at Royal Quest in London, and this is going to be the one-year anniversary of that great match. Of course, last year uh, they had that amazing match, and it was a testament to what great teams they are. It was also the day Antonio Inoki passed away, and it was an emotional day for a lot of the people in New Japan Pro Wrestling. It was a great event, and to have this great rematch one year to the day later and have both teams clicking on all cylinders and have, I believe, a match that could steal the show absolutely on a pay-per-view that is full of show-stealing matches. FTR and Aussie Open, that is one of the best matches on paper I think you could possibly ever see in a wrestling ring. And it's commensurate, it's very appropriate that we're going to have this great match this Sunday at Wrestle Dream. You know, Aussie Open, of course, mentioned this past week that they they call themselves still the uncrowned IWGP Tag Team Champions. They, of course, never lost those titles. And you can very much feel a chip on their shoulder a little bit in wanting to prove that they are everything they say they are, that they are one of the greatest tag teams in the world, just as FTR has been able to prove this past year and pretty much every year of their careers, really. And just knowing that there's so much drive for... Aussie Open to be in the conversation, to be in the conversation for being one of the best tag teams in the world and knowing that FTR is going to try and hold on to that title. They, of course, just had a tremendous title defense at All In against the Young Bucks, uh, one of their greatest career rivals. And knowing that they got to cement themselves in that moment as the best tag team in the world, uh, that's something that they're going to want to hold on to. And Again, when you talk about Wrestle Dream, you talk about the idea of, of drive between competitors and knowing that there's so much drive between both teams to, be, to call themselves the best tag team in the world. I'm really excited for this one. And of course, like I said, we've seen these guys tear the house down before with each other. I couldn't be more excited. I'm thrilled about this match on Sunday. I think it's going to be an amazing match. And again, this is what Wrestle Dream's all about. You've got FTR and Aussie Open, two of the greatest tag teams in pro wrestling. And it's the kind of match people have been wanting to see. It's a match that one year ago, as you said, it tore the house down. I've watched it multiple times. You've watched it multiple times. It was a classic. And it's the kind of match I've wanted to bring to AEW 
for exactly one year. <laughs> and, uh, and very fitting, it's another match uh, that I had circled. And here we are a year later, and uh, we're able to deliver this great match to the fans at Wrestle Dream. And this event, again, to honor the legacy of the late, great Antonio Inoki, the founder of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Very fitting that these two great teams, FTR, the most decorated tag team possibly of all time, and Aussie Open, as you said, they consider themselves still the IWGP heavyweight tag team champions. As they said, they never lost those belts in the ring. And they claim that they're going to beat FTR in Seattle at WrestleDream and solidify their legacy to become the most decorated tag team of all time. I cannot wait for FTR versus Aussie Open this Sunday in Seattle. I cannot wait either. It's WrestleDream. It's available on all traditional pay-per-view providers and Bleacher Report and on Fight TV internationally. We've got more with Tony Khan right here on AEW Unrestricted. AEW Unrestricted, Will Washington, Tony Khan. We're talking about Wrestle Dream live on pay-per-view, live from Seattle, Washington. And we can't talk about Seattle, Washington without talking about a place that's considered to be a, a certain person's house. Uh, a home, rather. Uh, but Swerve's house, Swerve Strickland, is going one-on-one with Hangman Adam Page. This is Swerve's hometown. We've been talking about hometown guys. We talked about Darby. We talked about Brian Danielson. Swerve Strickland also made a career in the Pacific Northwest. He, he became well-known uh, all throughout promotions in the area. And now he is going one-on-one with Hangman Adam Page, a man whose spot Swerve claims he is after, a spot that he he wants and Hangman currently occupies, and Swerve feels that this is what it's going to take for him to take that next step in AEW, but Hangman is not getting out of the way. Well, it's going to be an awesome match. Again, this is a perfect example of a Wrestle Dream Dream match. The fans all over the world are excited to see Hangman Page versus Swerve Strickland. It is Swerve Strickland's hometown, Seattle. It'll be interesting to see how the fans react because I think, frankly, Hangman is one of the most popular wrestlers in AEW, wherever he goes. And Swerve's going to have a lot of fans in his hometown, but I think there's also going to be a lot of Hangman fans in Seattle. Should be a great, great match. Very interesting to see what happens because these two have really talked a great game at each other and I think helped really build this pay-per-view because there's a lot of anticipation for this match. I think Swerve versus Hangman is one of the most anticipated matches at Wrestle Dream. And uh, the thing I love about this, you know, you talk about Wrestle Dream in, in dream matches, and this was one of those matches that you ever have one of those dreams that you didn't realize that it's just a thought popped in your head and you it wasn't even something you were thinking about. And I say all this to say that Swerve Strickland and Hangman Adam Page have never shared a ring together in any capacity. They have not had a tag match together. They have not been in a battle royal together. These two have literally never shared the ring together. And thinking about a, a, a literal dream match scenario, this is a match that has never taken place before. It's going to be an amazing, amazing match. Hangman versus Swerve this Sunday at Wrestle Dream. And Swerve says he's chasing that spot of Hangman Page. Well, it's really going to be uh, quite an obstacle because Hangman Page is intent on keeping that spot. He's not giving it up without a fight. And I expect it's going to be a great fight this Sunday at Wrestle Dream. Again, they've really built a lot of anticipation for this match. I think it's awesome, and I can't wait to see it. It's going to be a great one. Both former AEW World Tag Team champions, and Hangman Page is a former AEW World Champion. Swerve Strickland says he wants to be a world champion someday, and he thinks a great way to get there is by beating Hangman Page. Yeah, and uh, I think you know when you think about Hangman Adam Page and, and the career he's had in AEW, and how synonymous he's been with AEW really since day one, and uh, and how much he's. He's really been one of the faces of the company. And Swerve Strickland has obviously painted a target on him. You know, he, he mentioned this past Wednesday on Dynamite that 
it's not really about for him hangman adam page it's about the spot that and it just happens to be that hangman occupies that but that's something that to me i would feel hangman adam page would take very personally because to him whether it's the spot whether it's hangman adam page he is here to he is he has accomplished so much you know he is as you mentioned former world champion he's a former world tag team champion and now he's in a ring of honor and world six man tag team champion and he and the young bucks won those belts from mogul embassy's own brian cage in the gates of agony which is very near and dear to swerve strickland's heart very near and dear to yeah. prince nana's heart and the mogul embassy was very upset about leaving Grand Slam without the ROH World Six-Man Tag Team Championship. So that's another interesting factor in this match. Hangman Page, a decorated champion in wrestling, but last week he also became a champion again, a world champion, at the expense of the Mogul Embassy. And I'd be remiss not to note what great World Six-Man champions Brian Cage and the Gates of Agony were. They were the longest reigning reigning. World Six-Man Tag Team Champions in the history of Ring of Honor. And in the great history of those belts, they were the most dominant team ever. And they had a great match this past Friday at the Rampage Grand Slam in New York City. It was a tremendous match. And, of course, Hangman Page and the Young Bucks, in winning that championship match, I think further enraged Swerve Strickland and the Mogul Embassy. Yeah, absolutely. And and you could almost see in in Adam Page that even in winning those championships and what a great moment that was for them, that he still had his eye on Swerve Strickland and and that this match this Sunday is definitely in his sights. And I don't think I think Swerve's underestimating him. I think that Swerve, you know, calling him out and, and calling out all of the things that he feels Hangman hasn't done or has done in the last year and a half. Uh, I think Hangman Adam Page has proven these last few weeks with wins over Brian Cage, with winning the uh, ROH World Six-Man Championships. I think he has proven that Swerve's underestimating him. I think he's proven that he is here to stay and he's here to hang on to that spot. And so this is a match I am very much looking forward to. I'm really curious what these guys are able to do in the ring with each other. Very excited. Uh, Another match I'm very excited for because this contains two competitors who are familiar with each other but not not in this capacity and i'm talking about for the tbs championship julia hart challenging the dominant chris statlander julia hart is on a 27 match winning streak she has not lost a match in a year and a half almost and when was the last time julia hart lost a match that was on an edition of AEW Dark Elevation, it was episode 60, and she lost that match to one Chris Statlander. Yes. And that was far before Julia Hart joined the House of Black. That's far before we learned who Julia Hart truly is, that we've seen this side of Julia Hart. Absolutely. And we've seen Julia Hart transform since then. I think she was wearing the eye patch at the time. Yes. And, uh, you know, it's very interesting. You know, Julia Hart had an amazing, amazing winning streak. And for her to step up and try to convert this 27-match winning streak into the TBS championship, it is a bold move, and it's befitting the way Julia Hart has risen to the challenge recently in AEW. I think she's one of the most improved wrestlers in the world in the past year. Her presence is through the roof. Her charisma, uh, it's just unbelievable. And it's a true transformation that Julia Hart has done since she joined the House of Black. The House of Black have held championships in AEW. Of course, I think Julia Hart would be an amazing TBS champion. Now, the person she's stepping up against, Chris Statlander, it's a fascinating situation because, again, she's the last person to beat Julia Hart in a singles match, and Chris Statlander is also on fire. These are two of the hottest wrestlers in AEW going one-on-one, and Julia Hart, if there's anybody that could stop this undefeated run of Julia Hart, I think it's Chris Statlander, but the flip side is also true. I really believe if there's anybody that could take the TBS championship from the red-hot Chris Statlander right now, I think it's Julia Hart in the form she's in. She's on fire. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, Julia Hart has gotten some incredible wins recently. 
uh, and having done it over 27 straight matches and uh, this past Wednesday defeating Willow Nightingale and, and Willow Nightingale of course is one of the top competitors in all elite wrestling and for her to to get that victory over her uh, with a beautiful moonsault by the way it was a uh, tremendous moonsault yeah I, I, I thought that was incredible uh, I think she showed that she is ready for uh, to step up to Chris Statlander Chris Statlander on the other hand though has had uh, some incredible victories recently, um, just having recently defeated Jade Cargill, having defeated uh, Britt Baker as well in Britt's hometown. And between the two of them, they are just on such a hot streak. And th- this is one of those something has to give between the two of them. Somebody's got to lose. And it's either the TBS champion or it is the House of Black's Julia Hart. These are two of the hottest wrestlers in AEW, without a doubt, and it's going to be a great match this Sunday. Chris Statlander defending the TBS championship against the House of Black's Julia Hart. And that can be seen on WrestleDream this Sunday. Seattle, it's live. It's on pay-per-view, traditional pay-per-view, Bleacher Report, Fight TV International. We've also got for the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship. This is a very interesting match to me. Because a week ago, this match looked very different. It's MJF, who is one half of the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championship, or Tag Team Champions, alongside his partner in Better Than You, Bay Bay, Adam Cole, going up against The Righteous. Except now the match has become a handicap match. MJF, on his own, will be defending the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship against The Righteous. Tony Khan, how can you sanction this? Well, it's something that MJF has asked for. You know, he does not want to forfeit the championship. He wants to go on and fight, and he wants to ensure that when Adam Cole returns from that injury that they're still the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. And it's a bold move from the AEW World Champion MJF, given that he's got his own title to worry about, his own schedule of defenses coming up, given that he's coming off possibly his toughest defense since he won the championship at Grand Slam against Samoa Joe and everything it took for him to retain the championship, I think it takes a lot of guts for MJF to say that he'll take on the righteous two-on-one. This is a very, very dangerous tag team, and it would be a bold move to take them on -on two-on-two. And for MJF to go in one-on-two, I think it's really showing that MJF has... uh, evolved and developed a bravery. MJF's always had guts, but now he's doing it for a purpose. And we've seen MJF is standing up, trying to fight to help Adam Cole retain that championship through this injury. It's a terrible break. It's a terrible, unfortunate stroke of luck, what happened to Adam Cole. But what's come out of it, I think, is really touching. That MJF is bound and determined to make sure that when Adam Cole comes back from that injury, that he's still going to be a tag team champion with MJF. Absolutely. I I think it is really commendable that Max wants to defend the title. That, you know, at, at any point they could have relinquished the championships this past Wednesday. And instead, we're seeing a new side of MJF, you know, that maybe an older MJF would have walked away from this type of scenario, but this MJF is willing to walk into a match with the righteous and the righteous are on such a roll right now. They have gotten so many uh, incredible victories. Of course, they won the four way eliminator this past Friday at rampage grand slam to become uh, the challengers for the title at wrestle dream. But in, in this scenario, they have a distinct advantage, not just being in a two-on-one scenario, but the role that they have been on as a team, the victories they have picked up on Rampage, on Collision, the matches we've seen them, uh, the, the victories we've seen them get. They beat the Hardys, one of the greatest tag teams of all time. The Righteous has a victory over the Hardys. And thinking about everything they have, all of the advantages they have as a team going into this match, and on top of that now, it's a two-on-one handicap match. I feel this is almost a shoe-in scenario for them. I do think it's very possible that MJF has bitten off more than he could chew in this match on Sunday 
MJF fighting the righteous one on two for the ROH World Tag Team Championship. Now, Tony, I have to again talk about dream scenarios. This is Wrestle Dream. We have a trios match featuring very unlikely partners. If you had even said to me a week ago that this could be possible, we have on one side, we have Chris Jericho teaming with an all time rival of his. And Kenny Omega, you talk about the history of AEW, first ever AEW main event between these two, uh, and history that goes back before AEW, teaming with, of course, Kota Ibushi to take on the team of Sammy Guevara, the newest member of the Don Callis family, and Konosuke Takeshita, and, of course, Will Ospreay. This is just an incredible set of athletes all together in one match. And for so many, uh, there's so much here that has just taken place in just the last week that has allowed all of this to happen. Thinking about Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega having a common enemy in Don Callis uh, and Don Callis being able to, to put together this family that he has and being able to turn so many people against the ones that at one point Don Callis would have said he loved, uh, to be able to turn Sammy Guevara against Chris Jericho. Sammy Guevara, of course, having been with Chris Jericho since day one of Dynamite, and uh, Konosuke Takeshita, who had such a relationship with Kenny Omega, and Don Callis was able to, to lure him over. And then, of course, you have the great Will Ospreay, somebody who... Uh, has had a tremendous set of matches already this year with Kenny Omega and knowing that these guys are going to get back in the ring together. And uh, Will Ospreay, of course, just having had a match with Chris Jericho at All In uh, that really tore the house down. And all of these guys in the same ring, the same time, this is just tremendous. Yes, this is an amazing trios match. I'm so excited about this. First of all, it's incredible that we get to see the Golden Lovers Kenny Omega and Kota Ibushi together at Wrestle Dream. And it's even more incredible that they're going to be forming a trio with Chris Jericho. This is unprecedented to have Jericho, Omega, and Ibushi teaming up. And it's important to look at what brought these three together. It's Don Callis and this twisted family he's formed. And you've seen Sammy Guevara whose bond with Chris Jericho goes back to the very first episode of AEW Dynamite. Fast forward 206 episodes later, and Sammy really betrayed that friendship, took advantage of what could have been a beautiful moment between Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara, and really Sammy Guevara a cheap shot on Chris Jericho, not the last cheap shot that Don Callis would be involved in, this week, we saw Don Callis and Takeshita go to Japan, leave Kota Ibushi Lang, speaking of cheap shots, really uh, an underhanded attack from Don Callis along with Takeshita. So for Takeshita and Sammy Guevara to team, that's amazing as it is. But then to bring in as their partner a man who's been a great rival to everybody on the opposing trio. Uh, And in particular, as we've seen in recent AEW pay-per-views, great matches with Will Ospreay defeating Kenny Omega at Forbidden Door, Will Ospreay defeating Chris Jericho at All In, and now Will Ospreay coming to Wrestle Dream to team up with Takeshita and Sammy Guevara, along with Don Callis, taking on that incredible trio of Jericho, Omega, Ibushi, I think this is an amazing, amazing match, and this is what Wrestle Dream's all about. Once again, awesome, awesome matches like this. This is very much befitting the spirit of the event. You have some great competitors. Many of these wrestlers uh, made a name for themselves in New Japan Pro Wrestling, a promotion founded by the late great Antonio Inoki. Some of these rivalries and bonds were formed there, strengthened there, and what a match it's going to be when you have... Takeshita teaming with Sammy Guevara and Will Ospreay to take on Kenny Omega, Kota Ibushi, and Chris Jericho this Sunday in Seattle, live on pay-per-view at AEW Wrestle Dream. It's happening 8 p.m. this Sunday. It's available on Bleacher Report. It's available on traditional pay-per-view. It's available on Fight TV internationally. This is going to be an incredible 
show. We've got so much more to talk about right here on AEW Unrestricted. AEW Unrestricted, Will Washington, Tony Khan. We're still here talking about Wrestle Dream, which is live this Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. That's available on Bleacher Report. It's on traditional pay-per-view. It's on Fight TV internationally. And, of course, AEWTix.com if you're in the Seattle area. And we've been talking about dream matches all show long, and we've still got more to talk about. Well, Will, I've got one of the biggest dream matches in all of pro wrestling. Eddie Kingston versus Katsuyori Shibata for the Ring of Honor World Championship and the New Japan Strong Openweight Championship. Katsuyori Shibata himself right now is the Ring of Honor Pure Champion, and I personally believe that Katsuyori Shibata is wrestling's greatest champion. What he has endured, what he's accomplished, everything he's done to come back to pro wrestling, people thought Katsuyori Shibata might not survive his injuries. Nobody expected him to ever step in the ring again. Then when he stepped in the ring and started training again, nobody expected him to wrestle matches again. He had matches. Nobody thought he would ever be a full-time wrestler again. He came to AEW and Ring of Honor. He's been with us in America and become a full-time part of our crew. Then nobody ever thought he'd be a champion again. He has become not only a champion, but he is a great champion in pro wrestling. He has been a dominant Ring of Honor pure champion, and now he's taking on a man who accomplished a lifelong goal this past Wednesday at AEW Grand Slam to pull off a massive world title win in his hometown, New York City, in front of his family, his friends, against one of his most hated rivals, it was a culmination of so much work for Eddie Kingston, a man who loves international pro wrestling more than anyone I know. He wears it on his sleeve, and it's so authentic. Everyone in the world knows that it's true. He loves international pro wrestling. Eddie Kingston has grown up watching wrestling from Japan, and to become a champion in New Japan pro wrestling was a huge accomplishment for him. He also had built this amazing rivalry with Claudio Castagnoli, and he had been chasing him in a personal situation, trying to win his first ever world title as Eddie Kingston tried to become the Ring of Honor world champion. He fell just short at Ring of Honor Supercard of Honor in April. And at the end of the show, it's very fitting that Eddie Kingston stood tall side by side with Katsuyori Shibata. Since then, we've seen the two of them standing side by side on multiple occasions. They've teamed up on Ring of Honor. They've teamed up at AEW All Out. And now they're going to stand on opposite sides of the ring and go one-on-one. -on -one. And Eddie Kingston puts everything he's accomplished on the line against one of his heroes in the wrestling business, a man who's accomplished so much, yet I believe his greatest accomplishment is stepping into this ring as a champion with a chance to form a new triple crown in international pro wrestling. If Katsuyori Shibata wins this match, he could potentially form a new triple crown holding the Ring of Honor World Championship, the New Japan Strong Openweight Championship, and the Ring of Honor Pure Championship. And for Eddie Kingston... Can you imagine what it would mean to him to follow up that incredible win against Claudio Castagnoli last week, a legend in pro wrestling, somebody who's built an incredible career over the past two decades, and potentially follow that up with a win against one of the greatest stars ever in New Japan pro wrestling at an event commemorating the founder of New Japan pro wrestling, the late great Antonio Inoki, exactly one year after he passed away. And for a man who is a student of pro wrestling, a historian of international pro wrestling like Eddie Kingston, that means so much to him. And for Shibata, who is a student of Antonio Inoki, I think it's very fitting that he would go into Wrestle Dream with a chance to create a new triple crown in international pro wrestling, potentially with a win at Wrestle Dream. I think this match really epitomizes what Wrestle Dream is all about. And just thinking about Shibata, Katsuyori Shibata has had 
uh, to me, one of the most beautiful stories and comebacks in professional wrestling. And thinking about how Eddie Kingston was able to win the Ring of Honor World Championship last week at AEW Dynamite Grand Slam was another one of those just beautiful pro wrestling moments. And to see these two now come together, there's nothing I'm more excited about than, than the things happening on this show. And this is absolutely one of them. I think we're ensured that there's going to be a beautiful moment no matter what the conclusion is, it's going to be something special when Eddie Kingston goes one-on-one with Katsuyori Shibata for the Ring of Honor World Championship and the New Japan Strong Openweight Championship this Sunday, live on pay-per-view, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific at AEW Wrestle Dream in Seattle. And on the other side of beauty is... There's a lot of anger because on uh, we've had Ricky Starks, who has had a, a bit of a personal issue since All Out, where he's had to take on uh, members of the Blackpool Combat Club. And this Sunday, he is now in a match with Wheeler Yuta. It's going to be a great match, I believe. Wheeler Yuta uh, took exception when Ricky Starks approached Yuta's mentor, Brian Danielson. It turned physical between Starks and Yuta. And then we saw tonight on Dynamite, Uh, Starks took exception to that, and what an interesting match this is. Two great wrestlers, two people, I believe, have come into AEW, and really, since the first year of AEW, I think these are two of the greatest stars to come into the company. Uh, We saw Ricky Starks arrive in AEW in 2020, and we saw Wheeler Yuta arrive in 2021, and over the past few years, They've established themselves as two of the top stars in the company. We've seen Wheeler Yuta in some of the biggest matches in AEW. He's been in Anarchy in the Arena and the Stadium Stampede. And he's competed against top stars like John Moxley. And now for Ricky Starks to go one-on-one with Wheeler Yuta, it's very interesting because Wheeler Yuta has shown he can take all kinds of physical punishment. He is as physical a wrestler as there is in this business right now. And Ricky Starks, likewise, has shown he can go toe-to-toe with anybody. He went nose-to-nose with Brian Danielson in some of the best matches we've had in AEW, including that phenomenal strap match at AEW All Out and that incredible Texas death match last week on AEW Collision. And if Ricky Starks can go through that kind of punishment and stand tall, if Wheeler Yuta can go through the things we've seen him going through, whether it's a blood and guts, a stadium stampede, an anarchy in the arena, or for that matter, his trilogy with John Moxley, then we know Wheeler Yuta can stand up to just about anything. So when you've got Ricky Starks, who can stand up to all this punishment, Wheeler Yuta, who can stand up to all this punishment, I suspect this is going to be a very hard-hitting pro wrestling match. It's become a personal situation, and I think it's a perfect match for AEW Wrestle Dream. And we'll get a preview of this on Saturday night at AEW Collision, also in Seattle, on TNT, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, in the all-star eight-man tag when Ricky Starks and Big Bill team up with Aussie Open to take on the World Tag Team Champions, FTR, Brian Danielson, and Wheeler Yuta. So it'll be fascinating to see some of these big matches colliding on collision. And the special guest commentator for this match, fittingly enough, Zack Sabre Jr. I think that's going to be a great match. And it'll be great to get a preview of Starks versus Yuta, what I expect will be a very physical, hard-hitting encounter this Sunday at Wrestle Dream. And there's one more match on this card, and it's a four-way tag match that has some really high stakes. Absolutely. The winners of this four-way tag team match are guaranteed a title shot at the AEW World Tag Team Champions at a time and place of their choosing. And it's four great teams in this match. We have the former world champions, the Young Bucks, versus former world champions, the Guns, versus former international champion Orange Cassidy and the current FTW champion Hook, versus the former world tag team champions, the Lucha Brothers, Penta El Zero Miedo, and the current AEW international champion, Ray Phoenix. 
And there are so many interesting dynamics around this match. But one thing that I think is fascinating is you've got three tag teams that have all held the world tag team title. And you've got two singles wrestlers that have recently teamed up and seem to have found a great connection, as we saw at the Grand Slam Rampage. And now they have some extra momentum with Orange Cassidy picking up the win in that great four-way singles match at Dynamite. And we know Orange Cassidy is one of the greatest singles wrestlers ever in AEW. We know Hook is a great young singles wrestler. We've seen a bit of them as a team. It'll be interesting to see how that translates with these two red-hot singles wrestlers against three of the greatest tag teams ever in AEW, three former world tag team champions. And there are some other fascinating dynamics at work here. Not only did we get to see a preview of this match in Dynamite in that four-way match, we also saw Ray Phoenix successfully retain the AEW international title. And we know he's going to be defending it next Wednesday in Stockton, California, on the four-year anniversary episode of Dynamite next Wednesday night. That's an amazing match, Ray Phoenix versus Nick Jackson. It's a rematch of one of the greatest matches ever in AEW four years ago, fittingly enough. And that's another interesting dynamic in this match. There's a lot of things to keep an eye on. And I just think most of all, most importantly, this is going to be great, great action. There are some rivalries in this match, and then there's some potential new rivalries that we haven't seen before. And I think if the four-way match we saw on Dynamite's any indication, this is going to be a lot of fun when these four tag teams hook up at Wrestle Dream this Sunday. Absolutely. I'm so excited for this. You've got three teams who are former world tag team champions, and I think all of them are on a quest to, to, to add that back to their legacy. And then, of course, you have one team here in Hook and Orange Cassidy who have never won tag team gold before, but at the same time, I think have a lot to prove against these incredible tag teams. And uh, th- this is just another one of those matches I'm very much looking forward to. It's Wrestle Dream. It's this Sunday. This is such an exciting time. This is such an exciting night. And thinking about, again, just all of these matches that we have here on this card, I think is, I can't think of a better way to honor Antonio Inoki. And I'm so glad you're doing this this Sunday. Thank you very much, Will. I really appreciate that. Like I said, last year, I circled this date on the calendar as a potential date for a pay-per-view show and I thought Wrestle Dream would be the perfect pay-per-view show to honor the late great Antonio Inoki. I was just very sad when he passed away a year ago. I didn't get to know him personally. I have so much respect for him and I honestly don't think we would be here doing what we're doing without Antonio Inoki and the work he did founding New Japan Pro Wrestling and creating a legacy that lives to this day a partnership that's important to AEW and a legacy that will last forever in the wrestling business. And when I said that Antonio Inoki founded a kingdom that has touched all of us, I mean that. I think that Antonio Inoki's legacy will be felt forever in pro wrestling. And I appreciate you saying that, but it was really my pleasure. It's my honor. And I wanted to put together the best possible card to honor Inoki-san. I'm Just thrilled that his family will be joining us for the event this Sunday. And I'm really glad that they're excited about this event, that the Inoki family has embraced this event. I'm very excited for Wrestle Dream. I think it's going to be one of the greatest shows ever in AEW. And again, I believe it will be the start of a new era in this company. And we will continue a streak of the best pay-per-views ever in AEW. And I think the best streak of pay-per-views anybody's ever done in this business. And that is the one we're on right now from Forbidden Door to All In to All Out to this Sunday night, October 1st in Seattle at AEW Wrestle Dream. And that's AEW Wrestle Dream. That actually kicks off with the AEW Wrestle Dream Zero Hour. That's this Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. That's available on all AEW social platforms. And that leads into AEW Wrestle Dream this Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. 5 p.m. Pacific, that's on Bleacher Report, that's on traditional pay-per-view, that's on Fight TV internationally, AEWTix.com if you're in the Seattle area. And of course, you can catch AEW Dynamite every Wednesday night at 8, 7 central on TBS, AEW Rampage every Friday night at 10, 9 central on TNT. 
AEW Collision is live every Saturday night at 8, 7 central on TNT. And of course, you can catch Ring of Honor on Honor Club. Tony Khan, thank you for being here on AEW Unrestricted once again. It's been great being here with you, Will. It's been a lot of fun. We missed Aubrey, but I think we managed to keep a streak of great pay-per-view preview shows intact. Aubrey, get well soon. We'll see you at Wrestle Dream, hopefully. And I have to say, Will, uh, this pay-per-view, after running down the card, I was already so excited, but I'm even more excited now after spending this great time with you talking about it. I've had a lot of fun revisiting this card with you, and I'm so excited for Wrestle Dream this Sunday on pay-per-view. Absolutely. We'll see you next time. Have a great day. Come on, throw your hands up. Let me see you.